Section 8.1, the polar coordinate system. So we're going to look at a whole new world of graphing. So the old world was x and y. That's rectangular. And now we're in this new, more circular world. So the polar coordinate system is useful for circular motions. Um, the origin is now called the pole. That's the center. And the positive x-axis is my polar axis. So we don't have an x and y anymore. We just have a polar axis. Um, and the points are in the form r theta. So we get a radius and an angle. Um, when my radius is 0, that'll just be the origin, regardless of the angle, because basically there is no radius. The angle doesn't matter. Um, r describes the sine distance from the origin. So here's r equals 1, r equals 2, r equals 3, and so on. So it's just distance from the origin, not distance from x or y. It's just distance from the origin. So it makes a radius. When r is negative, we're going to do this weird thing and reflect it. So we're going to find the absolute value. Let's say we're at pi 4 pi over 3. And we go to the opposite side. And we'll reflect it over here. We'll see that in ex an example. So negative r is a little bit weird. Um, theta is nice because it's the same as the unit circle. Um, we start at the x-axis and go counterclockwise for positive, clockwise for negative, just like we did with the unit circle. So let's plot some points. So let's plot 1 and pi over 4. So pi over 4 would be right here. It's the same as the unit circle, right? We're going from here to here. And then we just go out to a radius of 1, so it will be right here. And that's it. Let's try 2 and 3 pi. So 3 pi, we have 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. So we land back on pi, and we go out to 2. And that's it. These are just single points. All right, let's try 2 and negative pi. So negative pi, we go clockwise, and we go out to 2, 1, 2. And we end up right there. And then let's check out those negative ones. So negative 1 and 3 pi over 4. I'm going to go to 3 pi over 4, which is right here. And we're not going to go to 1. What we're going to do is we're going to reflect across the origin. So we're going to go to this angle and go down here. So that's how it works. So you find the angle, and then you reflect across the origin. So negative 1. So pi over 3 pi over 4, reflect over the origin. So that's really the only weird point, I think, is the negative r's. Let's look at one other weird thing that happens with polar. So with Cartesian coordinates, right, that's rectangular. We've probably heard one of the two words. Um, Oops, with, this is not Cartesian, with polar coordinates, there are infinite coordinates for a given point. So let's see what I mean. So let's look at 3 and pi over 3. So 3 and pi over 3, we go to pi over 3, which is this angle, and we go out 3. Um, let's see what happens for negative 5 pi over 3. So negative 5 pi over 3 is actually the same angle when we go around. It's just because we go the other direction. And then if we go out three, don't we land at the exact same point? So those were two different ways of landing at the same point. Let's try negative three and four pi over three. So we have pi over three, two pi over three, and then we get four pi over three down here. And then since it's negative, we reflect. So here would be three, so negative three reflects into the same spot. So again, we're getting the exact same point. It's kind of crazy. And then negative 2 pi over 3 would actually be this exact same angle because we're going clockwise. It's a negative 3, so we reflect. And so we found four points at the same spot. And there's probably even more. right? These are just four particular points that land in the same spot. So that's something to keep in mind. There's infinite coordinates for a single point. So there's more than one way to describe this point.